Okay, here's my attempt at an Ignite talk focused on some of the research I've done in uh, on the island of Borneo. Get started here. So thank you for coming today. Uh, tropical rainforests around the world are facing multiple pressures and threats. And this is a major threat to biodiversity. One big um, problem is the conversion of native forest to production landscapes like oil palm and timber. This is an aerial view of a lowland dipterocarp rainforest in Sarawak, East Malaysia on the island of Borneo. These forests hold thousands of species, many of which are still undescribed, and the bird community in these environments is very rich. By contrast, this is an aerial view of Acacia mangium, which is a monoculture exotic tree that's used for timber. Now, it supports fewer species, but how many species it supports really depends on how it is managed. So in a hands-off situation, the acacia is managed intensively for about two years and then left to grow for about five more years. And during that time, a very complex understory of native plants can develop and birds can use this habitat um, for foraging and even for nesting, depending on the species. This is what one of these areas looks like when it's been cleared for planting and plantation. So the patches that you're seeing in there are patches of native forests that are found around on steep slopes and in riparian buffers. You can see that the intervening matrix of landscape is not very permeable. You're not gonna find a lot of birds in that area. But after about five to seven years, this is what that landscape looks like. And if you can remember what that understory and the older acacia is like, you can imagine that this might be a landscape where birds are using, they're moving out of the forest fragments and using old plantation stands. So we looked at forest fragments, the interactions between forest fragments and old and young acacia mangium plantation in a large mixed use area. We surveyed several fragments, small size, less than 50 hectares in size. And we also surveyed forest close to plantation forest close to and far from these fragments. And in addition, we were surveying older plantation, older than five years and younger plantation. We did point count surveys and we estimated avian densities and calculated species richness in these different habitats. We also looked at one intensively managed stand of acacia that was man managed throughout its cycle to promote growth. And this involved the removal of that native understory vegetation throughout the cycle. So here is what we found. So this is looking at the fragments. What we found were patterns of species accumulation that were consistent with the species area relationship and very significant. And so the top is including the larger fragment. And so we're starting to see this plateau in species richness, but basically increasing species richness with fragment size. When we looked at bird densities, what we found was that young plantation and heavily managed plantation had significantly lower bird densities than any other kind of habitat, and that native forest fragments in small plantation had the highest densities. When we look at species richness, however, the story is a little different, but young plantation again had lower species richness values, especially young plantation far from any kind of fragment. Um, with the native forest having, again, high, the highest values for species richness. Now, focusing just on the plantation, um, the upper um, image is of old plantation and the distance of the plantation, um, the points from the edge of a fragment. And we can see that species richness does not significantly vary with distance from edge. But for the young plantation, there was a steep decline in species richness from edge of fragment. We also like to see if there were indicator species that that indicated certain things about the different forest types, including their feeding guild, how widely ranging they were, and their IUCN threat status. There were a few species that were found predominantly in these more intensively managed plantations. And they were in their feeding group, they were general, generalist species. And these are species that actually are pretty frequently found in urban environments and suburban environments. Now, there were a couple of species that indicated old mangium plantation, and these were both understory insectivores, which have been demonstrated to be particularly sensitive to fragmentation and logging. So this was an interesting finding to find them in good numbers as an indicator of old plantation. When it came to native forest, lots of species were indicators. So we had a higher diversity of species, 
birds from a variety of foraging gills, particularly understory insectivore species, were found in these native fragments. We also found much higher numbers of threatened and endangered species in the native fragments. And the fragments themselves were pretty much solely responsible for maintaining diversity of threatened species. So maintaining these fragments is very important in these production landscapes. They can be even more effective when you maintain them strategically. So basically native forest supports more species with higher densities. Old acacia actually is pretty good at supporting species when it's not intensively managed. And native fragments are particularly important in these young plantations. So you need to have an adequate number of them to sustain populations while the acacia mangium grows up in these production landscapes. And I'd really like to thank all of my collaborators with help on this project. And thank you very much for your time. And that's the Ignite talk. Um, it was not easy and I spilled over as you saw in some slides, but that took some practice and I hope that you enjoy practicing for years as well.